men's role as a father shifting and their role as husband shifting and how they navigate that and how they move through that. Do they have the skills and the tools to cope with that process? In this podcast episode, we talk about how it might be different for boomer dads compared to Gen X or millennial dads. I'm lucky enough to be joined by Dr. Amber Thornton, who is an author, a clinical psychologist, and a strong advocate for the mental health and well-being of parents. Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. My wife's a teacher, so I do the majority of the childcare. My work is video editing, podcast editing. Like mm-hmm. yourself, I've, I've written a book, <laughs> although I'm pretty sure it's only my mum that's ever bought it. But there are days when I do not feel like being cheery on the way to school just because of the everyday stresses of being a parent of three. But I always try and make the effort to, to talk to other adults in, on the way to school just to show my children actually, even when you don't feel like it, keeping your head up, making the effort. It makes the world around you a bit friendlier, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. And it actually is funny as you're talking about this, I'm just thinking about how it might be different for dads. And I, I think a lot about what you said earlier. I do think that th- this is a really interesting time for dads and for fathers and men. And I, I think about how sometimes for men, there, there can be a challenge to really talk about how you're feeling, to really express your emotions, to really address mental health concerns. And so then adding that layer of parenting on that can also be a really interesting challenge. But I love that there's podcasts like this that can help guide and instruct men on how do we do this? How do we take care of our mental health, our emotional selves and parent? Because like we're saying, so much of what our children learn comes from us. And so how do we now change some of the direction of how we're taking care of ourselves, addressing our mental health or emotional health? to guide our children in it too. It's half the reason I, st- I wanted to start the podcast and the YouTube channel, because certainly yes. when I first became a parent, obviously mm-hmm. there's all the joy of becoming a parent, but if you have any issues with mental health, and even if you don't, I think just just the responsibility, the lack of sleep, it can trigger you. And I think sometimes it would be nice just to know or hear, I got so much support from other dads going, you're doing mm-hmm. all right. I think you're giving yourself a hard time. I think, and this is obviously a big generalization, but I think women are naturally better at sharing their fears about yes. parenting. And I think men mm-hmm. just don't, maybe because it's still a bit of a taboo, men's mental health. So that, that's the whole idea about the podcast. And even if I'm the first person to say, look, I, I struggle a lot. Some days I really don't think I'm doing a very good job. I think if mm-hmm. you're, the more conversations we have around it, I think hopefully the more acceptable it'll be for the next generation of men become fathers mm-hmm. absolutely and I, I i think it's funny i think a lot of why it feels like women are better at this is, is socialization it has been ingrained in us that this, this is what it means to be a woman to talk to other women to share your emotions to be emotional and while not all women are naturally that way it's just more acceptable but for men we've been taught and i'm using quotes here to be a man, you hide your emotions. You don't talk about that. You you don't cry. And now I, I love that we're breaking some of those myths. Of course, men can cry. Of course, men have a lot of emotions. There's a lot of emotions that comes with being a man. And now how do we learn how to express it? And I'm really hopeful too that how we're parenting now can just further shift the narrative around what men are able to do or feel safe enough to do in terms of addressing mental health and emotion is just so important. I think men's roles are changing hugely. And I think what it means to be a father now is not what it meant to be for for my father. It's a much more hybrid role, but I think it's still changing. I still, I I think our generation is probably, I think next Mm -hmm. generation will be a lot more acceptable that both adults have an equal share of the job and the childcare. Mm -hmm. I agree. And it's so funny that we see this shift everywhere. Like we're in completely different places. And yet that's what I feel is happening here culturally too. The meaning of what it means to be a father and the role is completely shifting. It is more hybrid and there is more childcare and caretaking and just presence. It's Mm. more than just financial 
actively providing or protecting. And with that too, I think that's where that identity shift comes in. And I think it's important to admit that with those shifts and roles and that identity shift, there will be some frustrations around it, some confusion, some big emotions around it. For some men, I imagine there might be this internal conversation of this is what I thought it meant to be a father, but now I'm needing to do something else. And this is hard. And it's important to have spaces where we admit this is really hard. And I think that's where that emotional regulation comes in while you're navigating this big job of being a father and doing it in this completely new way. How are you also then handling the emotions that come with it? And are you able to regulate yourself? Are you able to practice good uh, self-coping skills to to get you through these hard moments? And hopefully the answer is yes, but sometimes the answer is a question mark. And that's where conversations like this come in. And that's partly why I wrote the book. How do we make sure that parents feel equipped to handle these life challenges, such as men's role as a father shifting and their role as husband shifting and how they navigate that and how they move through that? Do they have the skills and the tools to cope with that process? What the podcast is starting to evolve into Mm -hmm. naturally and there's no coincidence that when I look at the content of my podcast that that, that had the best retention, have the most views, they are all, they are when it's me talking to a doctor, a psychologist like yourself. Mm-hmm. I think I certainly get a lot of comfort from talking to someone who is actually professionally trained and they know what they're mm-hmm. talking about in their job. They're published mm-hmm. authors, and I think a combination of having other men around you so you're not the only dad who feels like he's struggling because right. i think that's the stigma no no one wants to be i don't think the first dad to go i'm struggling because right. still in our society that's not perceived as an attractive thing to be for a man i don't no. think yeah and it's you know I, I will just here to say with all the families that i've worked with and all the work that i've done dads are struggling too I think a lot of time the spotlight might be on mom. How is mom doing? How are she coping? How are the children? And there's this gap where it's okay, but what about dad? And I think to your point, it can be hard to be the first one to admit, hey, I'm actually struggling with this. Hey, this thing that we're supposed to do as dads and fathers and husbands, I I need help when I actually talk to fathers and really get real with them and they become honest. There's a lot of challenges. There are a lot of fears. There are a lot of anxieties. There are a lot of worries. There's a lot of pressure. There is a lot of uh, just sometimes I think that men and fathers can also be really hard on themselves, like I heard you say just previously, about the role and how they're meeting it. And so all of that unaddressed absolutely can lead to mental health challenges. It can lead to anxiety. It can lead to depression. It can lead to high stress levels that can be detrimental to your mental health, but then also your physical health too. I think sometimes we also see that for men, if they are not addressing those big emotions properly, it can also come out in their physical health. And so we then see heart disease, other physical conditions, declining in their health, high blood pressure, which is we don't want that, but it, it's all correlated if we're not addressing how we feel, if we don't feel safe enough to do it, if we don't feel like there's a place to do it, it will come out and it can come out in conflict in your marriage. It might come out in how you're parenting and maybe you're not as present or maybe you are more irritable or frustrated with the kids or in your physical health. And yes, how I guess the big question is how do we help dads? and fathers feel more safe to just share and be more vulnerable because you're absolutely not the only one. It is a universal experience. I appreciate you saying that. I think books like the one you've written will massively help. And hopefully podcasts like this will help signpost Mm -hmm. men to that sort of literature. I think the nice thing about a podcast is something that you can engage with from a distance. Like the radio, it can be on the background and you can listen to it on a very sort of superficial level and because I think that's the problem. I used to work in men's mental health and, and it was a struggle getting men to engage. It really mm-hmm. was. And 
But I think once they felt comfortable to engage, then they were there. Then they were signed up. Mm -hmm. I know personally, one of the biggest stresses in life is financial support. If you don't, I don't feel great that I lost my job just before Christmas. So since then has been stressful. I don't feel yeah. great that I feel like I could be earning more that my wife's having to do more than she has in the past. I'm very lucky. I've got such a fantastically supportive wife and it's probably very good for my daughter and my sons to see, wow, mum and dad are really working together on this one. That's really good. And I imagine the issues I have are probably my ego more than anything. But I think it's good to have that conversation and just say, look, this isn't yeah. forever. And actually, right. this could be an opportunity for your, your marriage. I think relationships are strengthened by these times. When, when yes. everything's great and plain sailing, you're mm -hmm. not being tested. When life's difficult, like now, that's yeah. when partners get the opportunity to step and say, right, I'm going to do the lion's share for the moment, that only makes me want to do more for my family. So it's an opportunity. Yes, absolutely. And it's making me think about, again, the social socialization and the identity piece. Many times when I'm working with moms, moms, I found that their identity is very, and their self-worth is often wrapped up in my ability to be a caretaker. Am I there for my children? Am I caring for my children? Am I showing up? And so I find that women often have these feelings of guilt and, and challenge when they are pulled away from the home. So maybe they want a career or maybe they get a job or something like that, but something pulls them. They don't feel great about themselves. But then for men, what I noticed is that for men, a lot of um, identity and self-worth is tied into their ability to provide financially. And so then what can happen is, let's say a father loses his job or maybe income is decreased or, or something interferes with his ability to work and provide for his family in that way. He starts to not feel good about himself. And for both of those examples, what I like to help men and women understand is that our identity and our worth encompasses so much more than just our ability to caretake or our ability to provide financially. And so there's this exercise of, okay, yes, that is part of who you are. That is part of what you want to do in your role. But what else are you able to provide as a human and also a loving person in your family to your children and your partner? And so for men who might be in a similar situation, I would say, okay, yes, this is not an ideal situation. You want to be working more. You want to be providing more. But can you think about all the other ways that your family might need your support or all the other ways that you can love them? And sometimes that can feel challenging to think about because if I've only really considered myself as the provider or providing financially, it can be hard to, to see all the other ways that our family needs and wants us to show up. I actually, personal story, I, I saw my father really struggle with that. He was hardcore working. He was an auto mechanic. He worked six days a week, 10 plus hours because his role, his big way to provide and, and show up for his family was he wants to work. He wants to be able to provide financially. But then my father got heart disease in his 40s, congestive heart failure. And so that gradually, very gradually diminished the quality of his life. He continued to work very hard, but I, now as an adult, I can see that he really struggled with how do I shift to show up for my family differently? He never decreased the volume of work he was doing despite his body and his doctors telling him to. And so then what ended up happening was that he was forced to retire because his condition declined so much in, in 20 years. And so... I think that I always think of that example of, I wish that my father was able to see all the other ways that we loved him, we yeah. cared for him and how we wanted him to just be there, even if he wasn't able to work the same amount. But for him, that was a really big struggle. And I think that's a good example of what can happen if men are not able to really unravel the identity around my ability to provide because there's so many other things that you can pr give to your children, your presence, your knowledge, your wisdom, your life experience, just the day-to-day -day caring for them. 
But then also if you are partnered with their mother, loving their mother and showing them a healthy relationship, you cannot do any of that if so much of your self-worth and your identity is connected to how able, how much for your capacity to provide financially. I, I say all that to say, I encourage men to really think of all the other ways that you as a person, your qualities, your characteristics, your personality, your humanity can provide for your family because men are so much more than just how much money they make. Your dad sounds like he was a really good man. And actually, yeah, yeah. in a way, I imagine his generation, like my father's generation, he yeah. didn't think he was allowed to be anything other than this. No, this is absolutely. my role and I just have mm-hmm. to do it. My father had a similar situation. He had a breakdown in his late forties from stress and work rated and was never really the same again. And I just feel it made me sad that like you've said about your father, there were so many ways that we loved him. He did so much for so many people. And I sometimes hope that they acknowledge that in some way, because I think you're right. I think Mm -hmm. it's not all about money it's not all about financial it's about i think if Mm -hmm. you're bringing up children the best thing you can do is show them how to to manage yourself how to work with each other how to work with your your partner and be versatile the people that get through these difficult times are people who are versatile and if that means you being like i'm now doing the majority of the childcare, do it really well do it to the best of your ability because you never know what your children might have that situation in their lives you're right. Okay, yes, I've lost my job, but now I'm going to switch and make sure that I'm doing the housework to the best of my ability. And when you say that, it makes me think these are all the skills, these skills carry over. So we're talking about integrity. We're talking about discipline. We're talking about hard work. And you still get to teach your children those same skills, whether it's on your job or whether it's in the home with just really caring for the home and doing the housework well. And so I agree. And that's why I'm just so hopeful and encouraged by this generation of parents, because we get to expand the way that fathers and men get to think about themselves. We get, it doesn't have to be so rigid. It doesn't have to be so limiting. Yes, I think for fathers, being able to provide financially will always be a core of their identity, but there get to be other parts too. And that's so healthy for mental health and men's ability to really stay regulated and, and composed and just to have the healthy emotional health. My wife loves being a teacher. I've had a number of jobs, but they've never been to the same extent as her career. I think hopefully it will just become more okay for men, for people to be allowed to do what they're good at. I imagine you and me both got our work ethic from watching our parents. And that's something that we would have picked up subconsciously. You would have always seen your dad working. I always remember my dad working. I just hope for future generations they'll see that that the work can be a lot of different things it doesn't have to be a paycheck it can be yes. lots of things yes and things that bring you joy because I don't know about your father but I, yes my memory is that he was a very hard-working man and I learned a lot about discipline and hard work but I didn't really get the sense that he enjoyed the work he was doing yes. and and neither for my mom I don't think they enjoyed it that it was just something they had to do And yes, I learned a lot of good lessons from that. But then now, like we're saying, how do we teach our kids that their work can actually be something that brings them joy? And it it doesn't have to be something that's just a job. It can be if that's what they want, but it's also okay to seek out experiences that feel good. And I think that's the beauty of just generations changing. I think our parents worked really hard to provide something different. And now we're doing the same. We're now working hard to provide a different experience. And I guess that's the cycle of life. We're all trying to do it differently, better for the next generation. I feel very lucky that I have the relationship I do with my children. I get to do the drop-offs and the pickups, and I've got much more input in their schooling than my dad did because my dad would be at work the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I feel very lucky for that. And I feel like I appreciate that that I've got a wife who supports that because. I think our generation is in a transition it's, and, and, yes. and change is not easy because yes. there's a part of us that thinks I should be doing this. But like, should you or should you be doing what actually your family needs? What does your family need? What do your children and your wife need you to do? What needs to be done as opposed yes. to what society expects of you? Because actually 
mm-hmm. I think that's where we that's where the changes are positive. Yes, absolutely. It, it reshifts your priorities in a way that I guess focuses is on something that matters even more. And I agree with you, change is so hard. <laughs> and I think in the midst of change and transition, that's when we tend to see parents really struggle with how do I cope? And I think that that's why, again, this book is so important because it gives you tools and skills to handle moments just like what we're talking about. We are in the middle of a transition. I, I think our generation of fathers are in a big transition. And so as you're navigating how things are changing, how are you coping? How are you handling your emotions? Are you making sure you're addressing them? Because this can feel really hard when you don't have those tools and those skills. And from every guest I've had on, particularly every female guest I've had on, there's a lot of support as opposed to seeing, and I have to work hard on this when my wife suggests better ways of doing things. I had to put my ego in a box and go, actually, maybe she is just trying to help you. Maybe it's not about her telling you, don't do it that way. It's not good. I think that's something that I could certainly do with being better at. But just saying, look, it, you're a team. I train Brazilian jiu-jitsu and I found that brilliant because it's incredibly humbling. So if you've got anything resembling a boisterous ego, that is a good way. Because I'm reminded on a daily basis that I'm really not very good at that. But actually, that's okay because it shows you we're learning. Whether you're learning at 8 or 48, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's such a good point. And I, yeah, that's interesting. It makes me think of just, again, the, the identity shifts in general. I think in the past, maybe always being up here, always being right, always being the leader. Now we're seeing things shift with men and women. And so... For men, it's okay, how do I handle when maybe I'm not right or maybe my wife does want to give me advice? Yeah, that's interesting. I never thought about it in that way. Yeah, don't be threatened. Quite quite often when I get triggered, it's actually maybe a lack of my self-esteem. That's my issue. That's not my wife's issue. That's my issue. I've got to work on that myself. And that's another thing that I love about in the book too. It helps you to shift in. Too often we think, okay, they're the problem and she's the problem. He's the problem. The children are the problem. But it's like, okay, no, actually, let's go in and think, how am I responding to this? How am I reacting? What feelings are coming up for me? And then a lot of times you realize, oh, it's actually just my emotions. It's not this conversation. It's not her. It's not him. It's actually this feeling that I'm having. The feeling is valid, but how do I actually address this feeling? I really hope you got something from this podcast. And if you're going through or have gone through a mental health issue and you found a way to make your life slightly easier and you want to share that story, please contact me. And I know it's a massive ask because no one's got any spare time, but I'm really trying to get this podcast out there. So if you have two minutes to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, that would be hugely appreciated. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care of yourself. My book, First Time Dad, A 42-Week Guide to Pregnancy, is available in Kindle and paperback form on Amazon and an audiobook form on Audible. To sign up for my monthly newsletter, please visit my website, www.dadmindmatters.com.